In game 12 of 1951 World Championship match, the challenger David Branstein chose an extravagant plan against Batvinik's Stonewall. On move 5, he moved his king's knight to the edge of the board, instead of a more natural development, and castled queenside, planning a pawn storm on the king side. However, Batvinik punished him for this unnatural strategy by playing strictly positional chess. First, he won a very important pawn on c4, and then, unexpectedly, launched an attack on his opponent's strong point, after which Branstein's position collapsed, and Batvinik took the lead in the match again. Branstein started with d4, and Batvinik played the Dutch defense again, c4, f5, e3, knight f6, knight c3, d5, stonewall variation. And here, instead of more natural knight f3, Branstein played knight h3, in order to move this knight on very active position on f4. c6, bishop d2. Branstein first develops the queen side in order to, after bishop d6, queen c2, prepare the long castle. Castle king side, castle queen side. Queen e7, and here Branstein made a move which he didn't like. In his annotations, he dislikes this move, f3. Instead of f3, he writes that it would have been more logical to continue the initial plan as the knight moved to h3 in order to move to f4. So it would be more logical to play knight f4 with h4, pawn h4 next move in order to ensure knight's good position on f4 so that black cannot play g5, pushing it away. And if black plays g5 immediately, that would weaken the king side. As white already castled queen side, the kingside pawns would be able to move safely without any danger. So knight h3 would have followed, attacking g5. Black would uh, have to defend it, h6. But now f4, attacking g5 again. And after g4, in order to keep the lines closed and knight retreat, white would have a very good target for attack on g4. And uh, white would be able to play later in the game h3 attacking g4 and opening the files on the king side. Instead of this, Branstein played f3. The idea is to prepare either e4, opening the e-file, which would be unpleasant for black because the queen is uh, already on e-file and generally it's unpleasant, and also g4 after bishop e2 supporting g4, which would open the g-file and white rook would be very active on g-file. So, Branstein wanted to play attacking chess. However, Batvinik proves this plan to be inappropriate because black hasn't made any mistakes and by simple move d takes c, he seizes the initiative. And Branstein in his annotations writes, admits that he completely overlooked this simple move. It turns out that if bishop captures on c4, that would be bad for white, because black would immediately seize the initiative after b5, with tempo starting the pawn storm on the queen side. The king is already on the queen side, so it would be dangerous. For example, if bishop e2, then e5 immediately, um, getting the strong position, the strong square on e5. For example, after d takes e, bishop takes e5, black pieces would be much more active. The bishop is very strong on e5, white has backward pawn on the open file, and uh, black is ready to continue the pawn storm, while white hasn't started it yet. Or if instead of bishop e2, bishop d3, then knight a6, developing the knight, and then uh, playing knight b4, harassing this very important bishop on d3. Or, if after b5, bishop b3, then just a5, with tempo threatening a4, trapping the bishop. So, in all variations, black would be much better. That's why after d takes c, Branstein didn't capture on c4, and played e4 building a strong pawn center and creating immediate threat, e5, with a fork. But Vinik captures on e4, and here Branstein can capture on e4 either with a pawn or with a knight. He captured with a knight. In his annotations, he writes that f takes e wouldn't be better, so both of these options are bad. White position is already worse. If f takes e, renewing the threat of e5 with a fork, Black would play e5 himself, opening the bishop's diagonal, now this bad bishop 
which is uh, Black's main problem in Stonewall variation, is active. And also getting very important e5 square again. After bishop takes c4 check king uh, h8, e5 pawn would disappear after the exchange and black would get a great squ blockading square for his pieces. The knight would be ideally placed on e5. And also black, again with tempo, would play b5 and start the pawn stone. So black would be better in this case. Branch, that's why Branstein captured with a knight instead of pawn. However, it's no better. At first sight, white is attacking a very important bishop on d6. And uh, this bishop plays a very important role uh, in the stone wall as it defends dark squares. And black needs to spend a tempo in order to retreat. And white would be able to capture on c4 later in the game. However, Batvinik assessed the position very well and decided that it's okay to let white exchange the bishop and get the advantage of two bishops, but get much more for this. He played b5, retaining the extra pawn, and this pawn is very important because this pawn seriously restricts white pieces. The bishop on f1 is bad now. It can't move to the active square on d3, so it would be passive. And also the pawn on c4 uh, plays a very important role on the queenside uh, storm. So the, later in the game, black would be able to play b4 and then either b3 or c3. And also black gets a very strong um, square, very good square, blockading square now for the knight. So knight later in the game would be able to jump on d5 with great effect. It would just dominate the whole board from d5. So white captured on d6, got the advantage of two bishops, but black's position is much better. And here Branstein makes a fatal mistake, after which his position, which was already worse, becomes absolutely hopeless and strategically lost. Instead of natural bishop f4 with tempo attacking the queen, and later moving this bishop on the active square on e5, and then starting the pawn storm on the king side, uh, and bishop f4 would also prevent e5. Instead of this, he played f4 in order to prevent e5 and also uh, start the pawn storm on the king side. But after f4, the bishop, dark squared bishop, becomes very bad as it would, as it's limited by its own pawn on f4. And light squared bishop is also bad as it's limited by the pawn on c4. So both of these bishops are passive now. So Batvinik played knight a6, just developing, continuing the, de the development. Instead of knight a6, of course, it was possible to capture on d4, winning the second pawn. However, that was too risky and that would lead to some uh, sharp tactical battle and Batvinik wanted to avoid this. Because after queen takes d4, there is very unpleasant x-ray. And white would be able to play bishop b4, for example, attacking both the queen and the rook. And after queen e3 check, which is the only move to save the material, king b1, c5, rook e1 attacking the queen, queen d4, bishop c3, white would get some activity. That's why Batvinik didn't capture the pawn and just continues the development. Knight a6. Bishop e2, and here Batvinik makes a very strong move, after which white's position starts to gradually collapse. You can pause the video and try to find this move. He plays c5, attacking the strong point of white's position, very important pawn, central pawn, will disappear now, so by playing c5 he eliminates this pawn and also gets rid of his doubled pawn. As you see, currently black has doubled pawn on c file, but now this pawn will disappear. And also preparing bishop b7, and after the pawn moved from c6, the bishop on b7 would be just great. And white will be forced to exchange it as the only square for light squared bishop is f3. And after the exchange of bishops, the knight will get full control over d5 square 
and the knight on d5 will just dominate, creating multiple threats, supporting c3, and uh, that means that black's position is strategically winning after c5. Bishop f3 attacking the rook, rook b8, and here Branstein in this um, already hopeless position blundered the second pawn. Instead of d takes c, he played bishop c3. But this lets Batvinik win the second pawn after knight b4, attacking the queen. If bishop captures on b4, that would be just terrible for white because of c takes b and uh, the pawns are just creating deadly threats. Also, after the exchange of bishops, knight will jump on d5 on a great blockading square, creating multiple threats. Fork, for example, on e3, it will support c3. So, that's why after knight b4, uh, Branstein didn't capture the knight and played uh, just d takes c, attacking the queen. However, this lets Batvinik win the second pawn. Knight takes a2, check, king b1, knight takes c3 again with tempo, check, queen takes c3, so now white doesn't have the uh, advantage of two bishops anymore, and now queen takes c5. So now black has two extra pawns and also a uh, strategically winning position. Rook e1, now before playing bishop b7, which would lead to the exchange of light squared bishops and knight domination on d5, before this, Batvinik makes a prophylactic move, h6, in order to prevent knight g5, because after bishop moves to b7, e6 would be vulnerable, and the knight from g5 would create some threats, unpleasant threats, uh, capturing on e6 with fork. So, in order to prevent all this, first he plays h6. Rook e5 attacking the queen, queen c7, g4. So, white finally started the pawn storm, however, it's too late. Bishop b7. This leads to the exchange of the bishops and catastrophic weakening of d5 square. g5 attacking the knight, but knight d5. So this knight is dominating with tempo. A great knight in the center of the board, which is absolutely intolerable. That's why Branstein had to give away the exchange. Now, besides two pawns, he's also exchanged down. Rook takes d5, e takes d, queen d4. Another strong move by Batvinik c3, opening the files on the queen side, and now white king is in real trouble. If b takes c, then just queen c4, forcing the exchange of queens, after which uh, black has easily winning endgame. If queen takes d5 check, then just queen f7, again leads to the exchange of queens, and black is exchange uh, up in the endgame. That's why but Branstein played b3 in order to keep the files on the queen side closed. However, queen d7 attacking the knight, knight f2, c2 check. Now, if king captures on c2, that would be terrible because uh, black pieces would be extremely active with tempo on c file, creating deadly threats. That's why king c1 to keep the file closed, h takes g, rook takes g5, queen e6, creating another deadly threat. That's why rook e5. Queen d6, another deadly threat, queen a3 check. That's why white is forced to capture the pawn, but now c file is open. Rook c7 check, king d2, queen c5, creating two, a threat of penetration on the c file with deadly consequences for white, and that forces the exchange of queens, after which black has easily winning endgame. Knight d3 attacking the rook, rook c6, rook takes d5, a6 to defend b5, h4, rook h6 attacking h4, h5, rook f6, b4, rook f5 attacking the rook and the pawn. Rook d6 attacking a6 and before capturing on h5, of course, Batvinik defended his pawn, rook f6. And after this, Branstein resigned. Hit the like button as it's really helpful for the channel growth and see you in the analysis of game 13.